again to see if I could get in, and I left word for him to call me that it was, you know, important. And uh, not till Monday morning did he get that message to call me, uh, which he did. Credit in that. He was really upset himself uh, about my being turned away at that point. But to back up a little bit, um, what I did after that, I left Grassland Family Care Center and I went back home. It was Friday afternoon. Uh, what I did, you know, I took some ibuprofen. Um, I had called Ruth to tell her what happened, um, my boys. Um, then I, I tried to get into other emergency rooms. I called Vanderbilt and Baptist and St. Thomas, and each one of them had a long, long wait. They said, if you're not bleeding, it's going to be several hours before you can get in to see somebody. They had a lot of trauma things that day with the helicopter and stuff like that. So what did you ultimately do after that? Did you ultimately see Dr. Bastian at some point? Uh, yeah. He called me back. I ran down to his office. I drove down to his office. I didn't run down there. Um, and Monday, he called immediately and set up an appointment for me to see Dr. Parsons at that time. Right. Dr. Let's, Parsons at, is at the Bone and Joint Clinic, right. Franklin. Let's uh, talk about uh, Dr. your visits with Dr. Parsons. Uh, but before that, we, did Dr. Bastian prescribe you? I think that, that Monday he gave me some samples, you know, some Darvon or Lortab or something like that. I don't recall if he gave me an actual prescription because he had set up the appointment with Dr. Parsons the next morning, next day. Um, can you describe to the jury how you were feeling the day after the accident? The day after the accident was obviously Saturday, and Saturday and Sunday I, I kept getting sore and sore and sore. Couldn't get up out of bed after a rough night on Friday night. Uh, it just got getting worse and worse and worse. Um, <coughs> Sunday was much worse. Um, Monday I knew something serious was wrong. Um, thank goodness he called me early that morning. And uh, we set up the visit to Dr. Parsons at the Franklin Bone and Joint for Tuesday. And when you went to Dr. Parsons, did he treat you for the symptoms oh, yeah. that you had? Yeah. He um, uh, basically said, drop your drawers. I'm giving you some steroid shots in, in your hip, and that's what he gave me. He said, you know, he was giving me a major injection of this steroid um, medication for the pain. He also gave me hydrocodone, I believe, um, at that point, which is a uh, narcotic pain reliever. And uh, he said, you know, take this. Uh, and I don't think he gave me any um, sleeping medication at that point because he had shot me up with the steroids. Let me talk to you about that. Um, I'll hand you this, what's been uh, previously made part of. Dr. Howell's depositions, Your Honor, but doc, Dr. Howell's deposition, but I haven't hasn't been uh, made an exhibit yet, but it's been right. tendered. Do you recognize that? Uh, this is a chart uh, from the uh, Bone and Joint Clinic. Um, I think the date is 1029, thank you, 02, right. uh, from Dr. Parsons. What I'd like to do is make his entire, his, Dr. Parsons' entire notes a collective exhibit come in. Let me interrupt here. This first part here is from a previous visit. Okay. And there's no date there, but it's about... My Os Osgood Slaughter's uh, condition on my knees. That's what this part is, and this part right here is what starts the visit on 102. If I can, 
All right. I think those have been made. Uh, we've got Exhibit 3 or the, uh, the CV and the office notes of Dr. Parsons. Oh, well. Sorry, right, then I'll just have him refer to those if you are right. Okay. Exhibit 3. Can I look at those? I've got these. I'm going to put them up on the <coughs> Yes, sir. It's in the sign. Well, let me take a look at it. Well, let's just put this up on the screen. Do it that way. You know, I'm trying to do what you indicated and trying to get this. Uh, this. Um, oh, I was just going to try to get it as close as that. Can, on this date here, which is. This is Exhibit 2, Dr. Parsons. You went to the Bone and Joint Clinic for on a previous occasion on 7-27-2000? Yes. Can you tell the jury what was going on with you at that time? Um, I, frankly, I, just, I think I stumped my little toe. And uh, I have, for lack of a better term, it's called Osgood Slaughter condition, but I have really knobby knees that stick out on the sides right there. Um, and I was told that there might be something that could be done, and I went to Dr. Bratton, I believe was his name, to see if something could be done about that, and my right little toe. All right. Um, did you ever complain on that occasion or any prior occasion before 2002 that you had had back pain? No, no. Was that ever an issue, issue of concern for you at all? No, it's then? never been an issue of concern. Okay. Now let's go down to the bottom here and talk about, um, actually I guess I'll flip to the next page here where, where it's dated 1029. What, what was your uh, chief complaint on 1029? <coughs> this was the the back pain from the impact of Mr. Mitchell's crashing into me and the pain going down to my right leg. Can you read that on your monitor there? Yeah. Oh, here? Yeah. You want me to read it? Yeah, I'm going to try to make it bigger here. Okay. Yeah, just read it, please. Okay. Mr. Crawford was involved in a motor vehicle accident on 10-25-02 in which he was sitting in traffic and was hit from behind by a car going about 60 miles per hour. He was not thrown from the car. The car did not roll. He did hit the steering column and was not knocked out. He had the immediate onset of pain in his upper and lower back and down into his right leg. He has not had major problems like this in the past. He complains of pain along the posterior aspect of the right thigh, down behind the right knee, and into the lateral aspect of the right ankle. He says this is worse in the morning. <coughs> Turn the page here. And we'll continue on. <coughs> And down at the, where it says plan, you read that? Where it says plan? Yes. Oh, plan, depot, metro, 2CCIM. What is that? Do you know what that means? I have no idea. Okay. Keep, keep going. He is going to take the maximum dose of ibuprofen on his own over the next three to four weeks. I have written prescription for therapy to learn some rehab exercises for his back. We will see him back here, PN, PRN. Okay. Um, so on that particular occasion, you were, were you sent to therapy? Yes. And did you go? Um, yes, as I recall. I did. 
And what about 1104? What you made a phone call? What was the purpose of that? Uh, phone call? Yeah. Shall I read this? Sure. Uh, Ted calls and his 2400 milligram QD ibuprofen is not giving adequate pain relief and he is now requesting pain medication. He states that this was offered per Dr. Parsons at the time of his last appointment, but he wanted to try anti-inflammatories first. Let me interrupt you there. Uh, is that true? Yeah. Well, so Dr. Parsons had offered, had offered you at some point some stronger pain medication than Oh, narcotic. yeah. He wanted to put me on this high-powered stuff right off the bat. All right. And so you, so for a period of days, you tried the ibuprofen. Yes. And what? The, what? How was the ibuprofen working? Well, it wasn't working at all. And uh, he encouraged me to call if it didn't work. I was wasn't able to sleep. I couldn't get comfortable no matter what position that I was in. Um, so I called and, uh, as this indicates, asked for some pain medication. Shall I finish reading that? No, that's okay. Move on to the... To the <coughs> so, did you actually go into the office on November 5th of 2002? Uh, that's correct, I did. And uh, were you given... A, well, tell us about the medication that you were given. I think in, in the other paragraph that we just talked about, he had given me a prescription for Lortab. Um, so, as this indicates, shall I read this? Sure. Ted Crawford did not like the way the Lord tab affected him, so I have written him a prescription for Darvaset Dispense 30 SIG dot IPOQ 6 hours PRN pain with one refill. Hopefully he will not require this much more for than about two to three weeks, and at that point I would like to see him in getting him started on some physical therapy exercises to treat the chronic condition into his lower back. If he's still having significant problems when he returns in two to three weeks, we're going to send we're going to need to consider future investigative studies such as an MRI scan of the lumbar spine. He also complained of some vertigo and head problems while he was here today and I have advised him to seek care from his medical doctor about this. Well, let's talk about that. The vertigo and head problems, uh, can you tell the jury how those things developed? Well, I'm very familiar with vertigo. I don't know if any of y'all have had it, but it's horrible. Um, it's dizziness to the point that you're nauseated and you throw up. Um, I had this when I was a child. That's part of the hearing loss situation that I have. <clears throat> and it's, it's almost as bad as death itself because all you can do is hold on to the side of the commode and vomit. You know, your head's spinning around. It's horrible. Uh, I had that um, come on with the migraine headaches, um, the back pain. You know, the burning down my right leg, which later was diagnosed as uh, sciatica pain, nerve pain. And let's move to the 11-19-02 visit, which is just below that. <coughs> now, do you remember Mr. Gilmore mentioning the fact that that, uh, or actually I think it may have been Dr. Parsons' deposition, I'm not sure, but there was some discussion about you talking to him about